The unit circle is a circle whose center is at the origin, which is the point zero zero, that has a radius of one. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, construct a right triangle just in quadrant one, um, and then we're going to figure out um, all of our ratios, which we have actually already done. Um, but we did those um, in all four quadrants, and we weren't talking about them in the unit circle. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, which is part A right here, is to construct a right triangle in the first quadrant. Um, here's our point x, y. And um, I'm going to um, make a segment, to the point, a segment from the point x, y to the origin. And then I'm also going to make um, a line straight down to the x-axis that's perpendicular. So that's where our right angle comes from. So we have a right triangle. Um, and then we're going to label the lengths of the legs of the triangle using the point x, y. So if you remember from the previous lesson, the horizontal distance, the one that's on the x-axis, would be our x value. Because if we were to plot that point, we would go right whatever x is. And then we would go up whatever y is. So the, the two legs of our triangle are always going to be x and y. And then the hypotenuse, um, it's already labeled on here, but it's always going to be 1 when we're talking about something in the unit circle. All right, the next thing, part B, is I want to go through and label the um, hypotenuse opposite side and adjacent side um, in relation to the angle, which is theta. And remember that theta is always going to be the angle at the origin. All right, so from theta, which again is right here, our opposite side is going to be the side that is already labeled Y. Our adjacent side will be the point or the side that's already labeled x, and then the hypotenuse is going to be um, the the longest side of the triangle, um, which is the one that's already labeled with one. So last year when you took geometry, you learned Sokotoa. So you learned sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, using the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse as your sides. So let's go through and figure out what those are um, for sine, cosine, and tangent, and then we'll deal with the other three um, in a minute. Um, let's go through and figure out using Sokoto what they would be. So sine, it tells me I'm going to do opposite over hypotenuse. So sine, and I'm just going to use O and H instead of writing out the whole words, or the, yeah, the whole word. Um, cosine, oops, I wrote cosine up here. It should be so ka. Toa. All right, so cosine is A over H, and then tangent is O over A. So that's what you, how you learned sine, cosine, and tangent last year. We're going to change it up a little bit, though. Now we're going to be always using X, Y, and R. Um, so the ratios are the same, it's just that we're using a different label. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to replace O, H, and A with X, Y, and R. So for sine, instead of opposite over hypotenuse, now it's going to be Y over 1, because remember we're in the unit circle, so my hypotenuse is always going to equal 1. So y over 1, I could just write as y. I don't have to have, leave it as a fraction. Uh, whenever your denominator is 1, um, it's just like a whole number. All right, cosine, we're going to do the same thing. Now instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, it's going to be x over 1. And again, I can just leave that as x. And then tangent is going to be y over x. And this one I have to leave as a fraction because I don't have 1 in the denominator. So those are the main uh, trigonometric functions. Now remember from before, the other three are the reciprocal functions. So what that means is we're going to take our answers from sine, cosine, and tangent, and we're just going to flip the fractions upside down. Um, so I'm going to first go through, and in green, I'm going to write down what Sokotoa would tell us. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosecant would be hypotenuse over opposite. Secant would be uh, the reciprocal of cosine, so hypotenuse over adjacent. And then tangent is the reciprocal, sorry, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so adjacent over opposite. So that was, I know you didn't learn these reciprocal functions last year, but that's how we would have thought of it last year using Sokotoa. And now I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to just flip it. Um, so I'm going to use the blue numbers now, or the blue letters. So this would be 1 over y, and this one I cannot... I can't do anything else with it. I have to leave it as 1 over y. So if 1's in the denominator, you don't need it. If 1 is in the numerator, then you do need it. Um, so same thing with secant. It's going to be 1 over x, and we have to leave the 1. And then cotangent is going to be x over y. So none of those really simplified. It was just really sine and cosine. So from the previous slide, um, what we figured out is that the cosine of theta, um, remember that it was x over 1 which we simplified to just plain x. Sine was um, y over 1, which we simplified to just y. 
And then tangent was y over x. And what I want to do is write something down that, um, that we're going to end up needing um, in the future. Remember that um, if, if a tangent is y over x, what that means is that since y is equal to sine theta and x is equal to cosine theta, what it means is that the tangent of theta you can get by dividing the sine and the cosine, which right now doesn't seem like super helpful information, um, but it will be eventually because um, we're working towards being able to use the unit circle to identify sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, and so that's going to be kind of a key for us to figure out the tangent. Um, so what that means is that each ordered pair, so um, in the previous slide we labeled a point x, y, it was over here in quadrant one. Um, in this picture, our x and y are in quadrant two. But what it tells us is that instead of thinking about our ordered pair as x comma y, we can think of it as cosine comma sine, um, which again is going to be helpful when we're looking at trying to find the sine cosine tangent of certain angles on the unit circle. And then a quick reminder is that um, in the unit circle, r is always equal to one. So um, even though uh, we know what it is. We're not really going to be using it. We're really only going to be focused on what our X and Y values are. Before we move any further, we need to talk about how you deal with um, having a fraction in a fraction. So we're going to do a couple examples here. Uh, the first example says to simplify the fraction 2 thirds over the fraction 4 over 15. So step one is going to be to rewrite this um, as a multiplication problem. So we're going to take the top fraction, which is 2 thirds, and we're going to multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. Now reciprocal means that you take the fraction and you flip it upside down. So instead of 4 over 15, we're going to flip it and make it 15 over 4. Step two is that we're going to multiply straight across. So if I multiply straight across, 2 times 15 is 30, and then 3 times 4 is 12. And then the last thing that we have to do, step 3, is to reduce the fraction. So we're looking to see what's the biggest number we can divide out of both the numerator and denominator. And if we look at uh, 30 and 12, the biggest thing we can divide out of those is 6. So what I'm going to do here is if I divide 30 by 6 and 12 by 6, 30 divided by 6 is 5, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So 5 over 2 would be my final answer. So let's take a look at a couple more examples. And these don't have the steps listed out, but we'll follow them the same way. So example two looks kind of strange because the numerator is just one, and then the denominator is a fraction. So we're going to deal with this the exact same way. I'm going to take my numerator, which is one, and just leave it how it is. And then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of uh, the square root of three over two. So I'm taking that fraction, and I'm going to flip it upside down. Now I'm going to multiply straight across. Um, this one that's in purple, um, even though it's just kind of a standalone number, it's not part of a fraction, you can think of it like it is a fraction, so you could put it over one. Um, but the important thing that you need to know is that when you just have a regular standalone number that's not part of a fraction, it gets multiplied with the numerator of the fraction next to it. So if I multiply straight across, one times two is two, and then one times the square root of three is the square root of three. So technically, that's our final answer. However, we can't leave that radical in the denominator. So we're going to have to rationalize. And in order to do that, we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now my final answer, if I multiply straight across, 2 times the square root of 3, we just write next to each other because you can't, they're in different places. The 2 is not in a radical, the 3 is. So they just get written next to each other. And then in my denominator, when I multiply the square root of 3 times itself, that just gives me three. So now my radical is gone, which is what I wanted, and that would be my final answer. Let's look at example three. This one looks kind of intimidating because we've got a lot of radicals here. So here's my top fraction, here's my bottom fraction. So what I'm gonna do is take the top fraction, which is two, the square root of two over two, and we're gonna multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So now it's gonna be two over the square root of two, and I'm gonna multiply straight across. So I always want to put the number that's not in the radical first. So even though the purple part is first, I'm going to write 2 square root 2. Um, and then same thing for the denominator. I'm going to do 2 square root 2. And now we have to see if we can reduce. Well, the radical 2s cancel out, and the 2s also cancel out. So 
what we end up having left here is just one because I ended up having the same exact thing in the numerator and denominator. Now some of you may have been able to see that when you look at the original problem, it's the same fraction on top of itself. Anytime you have that, it's always going to equal one. So if you recognize that right off the bat, you could skip right down to the answer and say that I know this is going to turn out to be one. All right, let's look at example four. Um, so I have one half as my top fraction. So I'm going to write one half and then I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal of the square root of three over two. So that becomes two over the square root of three. I'm going to multiply straight across. One times two is two. And then in my denominator, I can't multiply them together, so they just get written next to each other. Now at this point, we have a, a choice. Um, I'm going to choose to rationalize the denominator first and then simplify. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. When I multiply straight across, I'm going to have 2 square root 3 over, and then I have 2 times, and then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 just gives us 3. So what I have here is 2 square root 3 over 6. I can now simplify the 2 and the 6. They're both divisible by 2. So I would end up with 1 square root 3, but I'm not going to write the 1. And then if I divided 6 by, three, uh, by 2, it would give me 3. So this would be my final answer, the square root of 3 over 3. The first thing we're going to do here is draw an angle uh, that has a measure of 45 degrees in standard position. So because we're going to be using um, our points um, x and y, what I want to do is, is draw a point that is, if I connected it to the origin, would be 45 degrees. So that would be my 45 degree angle. And I'm going to turn it into a triangle like we've been doing uh, pretty much this whole unit. So I have my right triangle, but now we are in the unit circle. So one thing I want to, to make really clear is that because we are in the unit circle, our hypotenuse will always equal 1. So we're going to take our special right triangles and we're going to manipulate them a little bit so that it works out to fit in the unit circle the way we want it to. So what I want to do first is I want to write down our, our normal labels. So we're talking about a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So I'm going to put in my angles here. And yesterday, in our previous lesson, what we did is we would label the two legs of the triangle as x, and then the um, hypotenuse was x root 2. But now here's the catch. I need for my hypotenuse to be equal to 1. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this equal to 1. And I'm going to figure out what does x have to equal so that my hypotenuse can be equal to exactly 1. So I'm going to write this over here. x square root 2 equals 1. I would have to uh, divide by the square root of 2. So I would have that x has to equal 1 over the square root of 2. But we can't leave it like that because we'd have a radical in the denominator. So I'm going to uh, rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And when I simplify, when I multiply straight across, 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. And then when I multiply those two identical radicals, it just turns into 2. So what I have here is that my two other sides are going to be equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So what I'm going to do now is label my sides of the triangle using what I figured out <clears throat> uh, in red and blue. So I'm going to label this here as the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, and then I already have my hypotenuse labeled as 1. The next thing I'm going to do before we start filling in all of our, um, our trig functions is I want to label them x, y, and r. So we already talked about how r is 1. That's our radius of the circle. And then my, my two blue numbers, the, the lighter blue color, um, those are my x and my y. And remember, x always has to be along the x-axis, and then y is going to be the number uh, that represents a vertical distance. So if I were to put an ordered pair on this point here that I originally drew, it would be my x value, which is the square root of 2 over 2, comma, my y value, which is the same thing. So that would be the ordered pair that would represent um, that angle of 45 degrees. So now what I want to do is go through and I want to write in all of my trig ratios. And these are things that you should hopefully have memorized. Um, so sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x, and then cosecant, we're just going to flip over, um, secant will flip, and then cotangent will also flip. So now what I want to do um, is go through and write down what all of these are. 
Now, one thing I want to point out is in the previous slide, we talked about how the sine of the sine and the cosine are actually just uh, y and x. Because uh, when we're talking about the unit circle, the radius is 1. If you divide something by 1, it's going to be the same thing. I'm just going to go through and do the whole thing so everything hopefully is making sense. So for 45 degrees, I have to take my y value, which is the square root of 2 over 2, and divide it by the radius, which is 1. Now, like I just said, anything divided by 1, you don't have to write the 1. So it would just be the square root of 2 over 2. Same thing for cosine. Uh, my x value is also the square root of 2 over 2, and the radius is 1. So this is going to be the same answer, square root of 2 over 2. And really quickly, I just want to point out that we did in the previous slide say that the sine of theta will always be equal to y. The cosine of theta will also be always be equal to x. And if you look here, my x and my y, that is exactly what they equal. Now for the tangent, things get a little bit tricky here. Um, and that's where this fraction in a fraction thing comes in. So I have to take uh, my y value and divide it by my x value. So my y value is the square root of 2 over 2. My x value is also the square root of 2 over 2. We actually did this exact problem on the previous slide. Uh, when you have two identical fractions um, being divided, it's going to equal 1. So we could go through all the work of doing this again. Um, but if you, So if you really want to see it, you can go back to the previous slide. But it's just going to come out to be 1. All right, now for my cosecant, secant, and cotangent, we're just going to take our answers and flip them. Um, the catch is that sometimes we're going to have to rationalize, um, but that's not so bad. So for cosecant, I'm going to take my answer um, for sine, or um, well, actually, I decide I changed my mind in the middle of this. I'm going to go through and do it. Uh, I'm going to take this answer and flip it. So we're going to have 1 over the square root of 2 divided by 2. So this is going to turn into 1 times the reciprocal of that fraction, so 2 over the square root of 2. And then if I multiply straight across, I would have 2 over the square root of 2, which I know we did this the long way, uh, but is the exact reciprocal of this thing that I just put the, the star next to. So now we have to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. So my final answer, actually that's not true, it's going to be 2 square root 2 over 2, and then these cancel. So my final answer is just square root 2. All right, let's do the same thing for secant. This time, I'm not going to make you do it the long way. We're just going to take this thing right here that has two stars next to it and flip it upside down. So 2 over the square root of 2. We still have to rationalize. So I would have 2 square root 2 over 2. The 2's cancel, so I end up with the square root of 2 again. So because sine and cosine were the same, cosecant and secant are also the same, which kind of makes sense. And then for cotangent, we're going to do the same thing. Um, now, again, I could do this the long way, and I could have us write out the big fraction again. But if I take my final answer, which is just 1, and I flip it, really 1 is like 1 over 1. If I flip 1 over 1, it's still going to be 1 over 1. So tangent and cotangent actually come out to be the same as well. One thing I want to make sure is really clear um, is that we did everything in degrees. So we were talking about 45 degrees. But 45 degrees and pi over 4 radians are equivalent. So if we asked you to, to find the cosine of 45 degrees or if we asked you to find the cosine of pi over 4 degree, uh, radians, those answers would be the same. So it's getting to the point now where you need to have memorized in your brains that 45 degrees and pi over 4 radians are the exact same angle. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did um, with our previous problem, uh, but now we're going to do use an angle of 30 degrees in standard position. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of estimate where 30 degrees would go. It would be about a third of the way up the, the, first, the circle on the first quadrant. And I'm going to draw my triangle. So this would be my 30 degree angle. And then I'm going to drop down my, my um, side to get the right angle. Now again, we're talking about the unit circle, so our uh, radius is going to be 1, which is the hypotenuse of our triangle. So I want to go through that whole process again that we did with the 45, 45, 90 triangle, where we put in all of the labels and then tried to figure out um, what the other two sides would be if our radius has to be 1. 
So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is write in just our regular um, angle. So I'm going to make this 30 and this 60. It doesn't really matter which is which. Across from the 30 degree angle, our side is equal to x. Across from the 60 degree angle is x root 3. So those are the two, the two legs that make up the triangle, the two legs that make the right angle. And then our hypotenuse is 2x. So now what I'm going to do is set the radius equal to 1. And the radius, by the way, in our triangle is the same as the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say that 2x equals 1. And then I'm going to draw that equation over here. So now what I'm going to do to solve for x is divide by 2. So I get that x is 1 half. So what that means is that this side here is 1 half. And then this side here, I could write it as 1 half square root 3. That would be fine. Um, but the way you're going to see it written is like the square root of 3 and the 1 are getting multiplied together in the numerator. So um, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like the square root of 3 over 2. So the square root of 3 is on the top, and then you have your 2 for the denominator from the half. So these are the two sides that we're going to use for our x and for our y. So I'm going to go ahead and write those in on our triangle over here. So um, our x value, um, meaning the, the on the x-axis, is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And then our y value is going to be 1 half. And I'm doing that by just looking at this triangle here. Um, I'm just basically copying down the same numbers that are in light blue and matching them up with the same sides on our triangle that's part of the unit circle. Now what I want to do is label um, all of our sides. So remember that our radius, that's the hypotenuse of our triangle, that's equal to 1. That's the whole reason we're, we're doing all of this manipulating with the sides of the triangle. The x value is the one that's on the x-axis, and then the vertical value is, would be your y value. So I have everything set up. Um, again, I'm going to go through and do all my ratios, which hopefully you have memorized. Um, so we're going to have y over r, x over r, y over x, and then the reciprocals, you just flip them upside down. So if you are at the point where you are not yet memorized on all of these ratios, it, it's really important that you write them down every single time you do a problem. It really will help you to memorize them um, if you just continue to write them down. So now we have to figure out what all of our ratios are. So I'm going to do, for sine of 30, we're going to do y over r. So that would be 1 half over 1. Anything divided by 1 is just the same thing. So 1 half divided by 1 is just 1 half. For the cosine of 30 degrees, that would be x over r, so I would have the square root of 3 over 2 over 1. And again, anything divided by 1 is just itself, so the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. And then the tangent of 30 um, would be y over x. So this is where things are going to get a little bit complicated. So I have y, which is 1 half, over x, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So here's one of those... Uh, complex fractions where I have a fraction on top of a fraction. So I'm going to take my top fraction, which is 1 half, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. When I multiply straight across, um, I'm going to get 1 times 2 in my numerator, and then 2 times the square root of 3 in the denominator. I have to rationalize the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So I'm going to end up with 2 times the square root of 3, and then the square root of 3 times itself is 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. And then there's one more thing I can do, which is to simplify 2 over 6. That would reduce to 1 over 3. So my final answer here would be the square root of 3 over 3. All right, now I just want to make sure I re-emphasize the fact that our sine value, which is 1 half, is equal to our y value. So if I wanted to make this into an ordered pair for this point here, 1 half would be our y value, which is also our sine value. And then our cosine value, which is the square root of 3 over 2, is equal to our x value. So the ordered pair here is the same as whatever the cosine of theta, or actually I could put in 30 since we're talking about uh, a specific angle. So the cosine of 30 would be the square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of 30 is 1 half. All right, let's go over to our reciprocal function. So um, we're going to take our answers from the, the main three functions, and we're just going to flip them upside down. So if I take cosecant, um, that would be the reciprocal of sine. If I flip 1 half, it would be 2 over 1. But anytime you have 1 in your denominator, you don't have to write it. So it would just be equal to 2.
for um, secant, I would have 2 over the square root of 3. I have to rationalize because I can't leave the square root of 3 in the denominator. So I would have 2 square root 3 in the numerator, and then the denominator just turns into a plain 3. And then for my last one, um, I'm going to take this, the square root of 3 over 3 and flip it upside down. Um, now, I think there's an easier way to do this um, where it would be a little bit less work, but I think that sometimes it's easier just to follow the same procedure rather than save yourself a shortcut. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just flip it upside down, even though it's going to require me to rationalize. Hopefully rationalizing doesn't seem so bad at this point. So the numerator is 3 square root 3, denominator is 3. The threes just cancel each other out, and I end up with the square root of 3 as my answer for cotangent. Now, like I mentioned in the previous slide, um, we're talking about a 30-degree angle here. That's our theta. Um, that is the exact same thing as pi over 6 radians. So 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6 radians. So if any question you, you could, we could ask you to, to identify what is the cosine of 30 degrees, we could also say what is the cosine of pi over 6 degrees, and you would need to know that those two angles are equivalent. We're now going to do the exact same process with 60 degrees. You'll notice that we don't have a triangle here for us to kind of figure out, and that's because it's the exact same triangle that we just did uh, for 30 degrees. The only difference is that our, the two legs of the triangles are going to flip-flop. So if I wanted to draw a 60-degree angle, that would be somewhere around here. So I'm going to connect the origin to my point here and then draw a straight line down to make my right triangle. So this angle right here at the origin would be my 60 degree angle. Um, remember that when we're talking about the unit circle, r is always equal to 1. And then if you remember from uh, the previous slide, we figured out that the side that's across from the 60 degree angle is going to be the square root of 3 over 2, and the side across from our 30 degree angle is going to be 1 half. So it's the exact same sides, it's just we took them and we flipped the, the places where they are because the triangle kind of flipped. Now the 60 degree angle is at the origin instead of the 30 degree angle. So I still have the same information, it's just flip-flopped. Um, this 1 represents my r, 1 half represents x, and the square root of 3 over 2 represents y. Um, we're going to do the exact same thing where we fill in our ratios and then we do some simplifying. So, um, and actually before I do that, I just want to make sure I, I mention this ordered pair right here would be an x and a y. So it would be saying 1 half um, comma square root of 3 over 2. That would be our ordered pair that that represents. And remember also that the cosine of our angle, so cosine of 60 would be 1 half and then the sine of 60 would be equal to the square root of 3 over 2, which you will see when we actually go through and do all the ratios. So I'm going to fill in all the ratios, and again, if you don't have these memorized yet, I would really emphasize that you should um, try to write these down every time you do a problem. Okay, so I've got my ratios written down. Um, for the sine of 60, it's going to be y over r. y is the square root of 3 over 2, r is 1, so I only have to write the square root of 3 over 2. We don't have to write the 1. Okay, for the cosine, we're going to do the, almost the same thing, but it's x over r, so it's 1 half over 1, which is just 1 half. And then for the tangent, um, it's going to be y over x. So this one is going to require a little bit of work here, so we're going to have the square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. In order to simplify that, we're going to do the square root of 3 over 2 times the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2 over 1. Um, now, I can multiply this straight across, but kind of a shortcut that you may have noticed is if I have some, the same thing in the numerator and denominator, I can cancel them out. So this 2 here and this 2 here cancel each other out, and all I have left is the square root of 3 over 1, but I don't have to write the 1 because it's in the denominator. So final answer for the tangent of 60 is the square root of 3. Now I'm going to take all my answers and flip them, and we'll simplify if we have to. So for cosecant, we would take um, the, the sine answer, and we would flip it upside down. This one we do have to rationalize because we end up with a radical in the denominator. So I would have 2 square root 3 over 3, and that would be my final answer. There's nothing I can simplify. Um, if I wanted to flip around <clears throat> the cosine of 60, it would be 2 over 1, but I don't need the 1 because it's in the denominator. So the secant of 60 is just 2. And then for, um, for cotangent, I'm going to take my answer for tangent and flip it. Now, right now, my answer for tangent is just 
it's not a whole number, but it's not part of a fraction. So you can think of it as the square root of 3 over 1, and that way when I flip it, you can see both parts. This one is going to require rationalizing because there's a radical in the denominator. So I would have the square root of 3 on the top. I don't need to write the 1. And then my denominator would just be 3. So that would be our answer for cotangent. Now one thing you may have noticed, if you're being really observant, is when we did uh, the sine of 30 and the cos cosecant of 30, um, those answers are the same as the cosine and secant of 60. And that's not a coincidence. Uh, when we really talk about the unit circle all together as one big piece, you're going to see that it's the same pattern over and over again. It's, everything just kind of flip-flops and changes positions, um, but it is all the same information. The last thing I want to mention um, is down here where it talks about um, 60 degrees being the same as pi over 3 radians. So you're expected to know that 60 degrees and pi over 3 radians are the same angle. So we could ask you to find um, the cosine of 60 or we could ask you to find the cosine of pi over 3 and you need to know that those two things are the same.